Welcome to the show. Now, in what seems like a sudden turn of events, Benue State Governor Samuel Otong has apologized over his inflammatory comments against the Fulani ethnic group with specific focus on the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, where he said that he would not support another Fulani president. Now, Otom, while responding to questions from journalists in Bauchi, retracted his statement, which is currently generating different reactions. He says he was misunderstood over his comments. Now, Governor Otom has come under intense criticism for politicizing the farmer header clashes in Benue State and is using it allegedly to boost his senatorial ambition based on what the opposition is saying. Now, just last week here, we had his former aide on student affairs, Angu Ongu, but in the right of replies, Arise News will be given room to the Benue Youth Forum to reply on the same issues. Well, joining us right now in the studio uh, is Terence Quanam, who is the president of the Benue Youth Forum, uh, to respond to the issues raised on this program last week uh, by Angu Ongu, who is a former special assistant to Governor Samuel Otom on student affairs and coordinator of uh, Atiku support organization in the northwest, uh, sorry, north central of the country. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so just last week we had uh, a former special assistant to Atiku Abubakar speaking on several issues. I mean, uh, Samuel Otom's okay. speaking on several issues that have to do with why Governor Samuel Otom doesn't seem to want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, give room for reconciliation. But during the week, uh, suddenly Governor Samuel Otom, while trying to uh, speak on the feud between himself and the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, said he was misunderstood on his comments that he would not vote for uh, another Fulani presiden uh, uh, presidential candidate again. And, and so in all of that, uh, you would have heard all that happened last week. What do you make, first of all, of Governor Samuel Otom's um, apology to the Fulani people, saying that, look, he didn't really mean it against the Fulani ethnic stock, but he was directing those comments at Atiku Abubakar? First, on the issue of apology, that was courageous enough of Governor Otom uh, to be able to own up to his words, that he has apologized over the comment in spite of the provocation. Uh, that has been on in Benue State for so many years in his course of ruling Benue as governor. And so we commend him for that. And we have already seen several groups that have come up to commend him for being that courageous to be able to stand up and apologize. And uh, we urge other political leaders also who have made such comments uh, that are already boiling crisis within the country to be able to come out and apologize and also have the courage to be able to explain uh, the context of the statements they have made. Are you referring to Atiku Abubakar yes. and his uh, comments uh, made in Kaduna during that political Yeah, fight? not just in Kaduna, also when people were killed in Beji, in Ukum local government, where even two police people were involved. Uh, Atiku Abubakar is privileged to be the holder of the Zegem Molov Thief. Zegem Molov Thief has also been occupied by a former Fulani person before him, Alhaji Ali Mohammed, the former SGF to uh, the, the, this country. And uh, he did so well in that position as Zege Mole. Uh, we are aware uh, that since he took over the title before his demise, every child he has had, he has named after the thief people. And he was always in Boko, even when communal clashes were held. And so it became so strange uh, to the thief people and Benue State when the current uh, occupant of the position seems not to be the shade under which the thief people can be able to seek refuge. Uh, because there is no farmer head that crisis in Benue State. That is the narrative that we want. People are killed in their sleep. Children, women, and the aged. And now for somebody who is seeking to unify this country and lead this country, coming us to tell us that the killings that took place in our place was sustained farmer head crisis was strange to us. And he went further to say that those crises are happening because we are refusing to accept the people killing us to live amongst us. Well, uh, just to quote Atiku very correctly, he has said that, look, it's a farmer header clash, but uh, Governor Samuel Otom is ethnicizing the issue by specifically is, continuously that saying that I'm it's Fulani that there is no uh, and uh, generalizing it. No, and no. he is a Fulani person. No, and is no, he, has, he has never asked anyone to go and commit such no, crimes. There is no farmer header crisis in Benue. People are killed in the dead of their sleep. 
And these killings have been taken responsibility by the Miati Ala Kauta Hore. Not once, not twice, not thrice. These killings have been taken responsibility by Magban, Miati Cattle Breeders Association. Which is predominantly Fulani. These killings have been taken responsibility of Funa, Fulani nationalistic movement. So these are killings that people have taken responsibility. These are killings that because we know the people killing us, there are even cases in court with them over the massacres that are taking place in Benue. Now, when people are sleeping in their homes and you come to kill them, and somebody said it's a farmer head of class, where are the farmers? Where are the headsmen? This, most of these communities have been overridden by this terrorist. So what, what, what exactly is at the heart of uh, this clash between the Fulanese and, of course, the thief people? If indeed that's the context you're providing this um, uh, uh, discussion, what exactly are the Fulanese looking for? And what is it that's preventing the thief people from living peacefully with them? There is one, no context for the thief people to live uh, in peace with the Fulani people because they are not communal. The nearest village of the Fulani to Benue is 700 kilometers. That is one. In the claim that the uh, Miati Ala Kauta Hori stated that they are killing our people, that the, home, the ancestral homes that we presently occupy belongs to them, that our Benue was conquered by the Fulani people and they are coming back to take their rightful place. Magban came out to say that they are not going to allow peace in Benue because of the open grazing prohibition and righteous establishment law. Funam came out and said they are coming to take over the land that belongs to them. So they have provided reasons why they are killing us. They say the value we occupy belongs to them and they are coming to take over. And we have looked within our history that we are never a conquered people. Nobody has ever conquered us. So it is strange for somebody to sit 700 kilometers away from Benway and begin to claim that the land we occupy belongs to them. So they, they have given their reasons. We have told them that they have never conquered us. We have told Magban that if you want to come and raise cattle in Benway, you're welcome, but you must follow the law. Yeah, but the, 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 the thinking within these people also is that Governor Otom has politicized the issue uh, instead of addressing the issue as a leader. And that's uh, at the heart of what Atiku yeah. Abubakar was also saying, that as a leader, when such issues happen, you're supposed to provide solutions, not to make inflammatory oh, comments. Oh, oh, oh. I, 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 isn't it uh, so much inflammatory to the extent that uh, Governor Otom even used this uh, comment against the president of the country because he's from the Fulani ethnic stock, President oh, Muhammad Otom made that statement, but let me make a clarification. The issue is not politicized. The issue is not inflammatory. What Governor Otom has done is to insist that the law must be followed. That is just what he has done. Now, the comments Atiku went to Kaduna to make against Otom, and the condolence message he sent to him. Remember that Buhari that has been at loggerheads with Otom came openly in his condolence message to tell Governor Otom that human life is sacrosanct. And so for these killings, I am putting aside my political differences with Governor Otom and condole him over these killings and giving him my full support as president to investigate and get to the root of this crisis. Then your own presidential aspirant, somebody who is conversing to lead this country, coming to rather instigate the crisis further by claiming that it's a former head of crisis. There is no former head of crisis in Benue, and you cannot force the people of Benue to live with the people killing them. That was where we had issues with him. And more so, this is somebody that has the privilege of occupying one of the biggest chieftains titles in Benue. Yeah, and uh, this, this is somebody, this somebody, this is somebody what, what exactly does it mean? Actually, that is the big shade somebody. of the thief people. It it's means that we're like supposed to take refuge under that shade when we are in trouble. But now that shade we're supposed to take refuge is rather tattered and is rather turning back to fight us. Well, uh, Otom has apologized to Atiku. Otom do apologized. You, do you think he that... He didn't uh, apologize to Atiku. Otom apologized to the comment that he will not support a full candidate. 
So he, 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 didn't, he's he didn't his apologize his apologies to the ethnic, yes, fulani the, ethnic group, yes, he didn't apologize. not to Atiku. No, he didn't apologize to Atiku. Oh, okay, shouldn't he apologize to Atiku so no, that they have an understanding and also they, maybe seek an apology from Atiku uh, so that, you know, this he, issue will be balanced? He has already seeking an apology to Atiku. Uh, from what he has said, Atiku has apologized to him privately, but the statement yeah. in Kaduna was in public space, so he expected him to be courageous enough like him to go into public space and apologize to him so that Nigerians will know that he has retracted the statement. And then the issue of Otom and Atiku are different from the issue of Fulani. Maybe the provocation pushed him to that level, but he has apologized. But the issue is this. We know that Fulani terrorists are attacking us. We are not the people that have profiled Fulani as terrorists. The Global Terrorism Index have rated the Fulani terrorists as the fourth most dangerous terrorist group in the world. We didn't bring that up. This is a global organization. Now we know they are attacking us. We are aware. And the president of late has also come out to address this and admit it that yes, there are Fulani people that have come from Mauritania, from the Central African Republic, from Chad, Niger, that are attacking his people. Now we know that we have also lived with Fulani people peacefully. Now it is for the Fulani people that have been living with us peacefully to separate themselves from these people so that collectively we know we have a common enemy. Uh, that and is Governor Italian. Tom tried to do that through the livestock guard, trying to say, look, he's putting in place a law that will help to reduce this issue. You have said it's not a farmer header clashes, but that law, the livestock guard, was, was put in place to actually prevent farmer header clashes. And so in this instance, how can the law be better applied in, in, in a non-political way to resolve this issue. There is no law that will be applied in a political way. That's what uh, Mieti Allah and others no, are saying, that the law even, was targeted they have not even, at them. They have not even come to be able to rear the, the, the heads of cattle that they have not been able to do so. They have never come at all. And as I speak with you, the people coming to attack us don't come with heads of cattle. They come with guns on, on bikes and uh, sometimes even explosive devices to come and attack our people. So they don't come with heads of cattle. So where are the herders? OK. Now let's also talk about uh, uh, the statement made by uh, some politicians in, in Benue and, of course, across the nation that uh, Governor Otom is politicizing these issues between him and Atiku Abubakar and the farmer header clashes and using it to drive his senatorial ambition for the Benue Northwest Senatorial District. What do you make of that? Including, I mean, we had uh, his former aide here as a, uh, on uh, student affairs who was here and saying that, look, uh, Otom needs to stop politicizing I the issues that we have on it's, ground. It's quite unfortunate that uh, uh, somebody who has worked closely and to a large extent at the point took part in this struggle, who come on national TV because of some certain interests to say we are politicizing the crisis. How will you politicize the crisis that they are killings? They killed people after the Beji killings where two police people were killed. As we speak with you, last week there was a killing. The people that survived if we go to the teaching hospital, somebody's two eyes has been chopped off. Some people's hands have been cut. How is that politicizing killings? Killings are happening in Benue. As we speak today, the Lafia Makodi Highway is not safe. You need to be very careful at the hours you are going to ply that route because these people will come out and attack you. And this situation has already overwhelmed the security uh, uh, forces because as we speak, there are some ancestral homes that people have never been there for three years. Is, so, is it a matter of uh, the security forces being overwhelmed? Or they've done their best to not, be able to If they have not been overwhelmed, issues. how will you come to resolve a crisis? And people have been in IDP camps for over three years. Some people, if they even go back to those ancestral homes, they might not be able to recognize where they come from. How is that? Who will want to leave the convenience of his home, his farmland, which is his means of livelihood, to go and stay in an IDP camp because of politicizing the crisis for three years? It's not possible. These people have occupied our ancestral homes. They have been there for three years. And nobody has come to the aid of Benue people to be able to push them away for our people to go back to their ancestral homes. And you call that politics. It's quite unfortunate that the devastating situation we found ourselves in as a people when politics has come, Instead of providing solutions for us to be able to see that hope is coming on the way for the people of Benue, they are rather politicizing it 
to take advantage of it. It's quite an unfortunate situation. Yeah, and the, the major accusation is against Otton himself. No, that the, the PDP is losing ground. Otom the PDP is losing ground in Benue due to alleged misgovernance by Otom, and as a result of that, what, he's latching what, up what, on what, this and not paying salaries if, and other things, but just focusing on this to use it to drive a narrative Otom. and to to drive fear among you people cannot, who also return you, uh, the the PDP back to power in you Benue. You cannot accuse Otom of misgovernance in Benue. That's the allegation no, by the opposition. I'm telling you on ground. I'm telling you on ground, and I'm not a politician. You cannot accuse Otum of misgovernance. The infrastructure that Otum has provided in Benue has never been provided in Benue since Aperico. As we speak, the salary areas that Otum has inherited in Benue, as we speak, is on the way clearing them out. So you cannot come and accuse Otum of misgovernance. And nobody has come into that seat to face the kind of challenges that he's facing. Rather, the Benue people are sympathizing with Otom because he has sacrificed the comfort of his office and his life to be able to protect the people of Benue. Otom does not need to politicize any crisis for him to win an election. He was on top of this issue in 2019. We massively voted for him against him in the federal forces. Uh, that uh, wanted uh, to what, stop do you, him. what do you make uh, of the APC and its uh, APC uh, uh, Reverend APC. Father candidate that's making waves everywhere? And of course, uh, especially in the Tivland, uh, a lot of people are beginning to receive him with open arms. And of course, the Labour Party is also making an incursion. Isn't all of this an indictment of, February, February, of, February, of uh, uh, Governor Tom's style This of is not the first time APC are coming. They brought with all the federal might, but we, the people of Benue. We know what we want. Coincidentally, for or, or Tom himself came through APC in 2015. We, the people of Benue, we know what we want. And on February 23rd, we're going to make our choice. Nobody is going to force us. We know that we need to protect our ancestral homes. We don't know why where we are living has become an issue to some certain clients in this country. And we know that our forefathers protected that place for us to come and inherit it and we're not ready to give it out to anybody. Now, let's talk about the place of the federal government in all of this, because Atiku Abubakar is knowing government. Let's leave aside this uh, fight with Otom and, and face the issues. What do you think are the ways that the government from the federal level can help Benway to resolve this crisis? Because Otom is going, and yeah. the new governor will be elected next year. How do we prevent the new government from inheriting these problems? We had a crisis in Benway where our communities were invaded and people were killed. And people came out to take responsibility of those killings. None of them were arrested. Even when videos were provided as evidence, even when national dailies took the press releases that were captured, in broad daylight they sat on press conferences and took responsibilities of those killings. And nobody came out to arrest them. Now, that is where we had issues with the federal government, that the sanctity of life must be sacrosanct. Yeah, and, and how do we point. go? And then someone uh, says uh, that I killed there. 73 Nigerians because they rustled my cows. And we begin to ask if you don't know, if you are not trained in the art of herding, how will you be able to rustle a cow? And then you are talking of thousands of cows. We are not trained in the art, we are farmers. And we don't know how to herd cattle. And so we expected the federal government to have been on top of the situation, making some arrests to even give our people hope. Now we had people in IDP camps, and what is the situation that the federal government has provided? Nothing for three years. Not even by the National Emergency Management Agency. National Emergency we even we, at the we, point we, yeah, we, been at point we some... need to raise alarms that the National Emergency Management Agency was not giving attention to our IDP camps. Not giving much attention. No, they, no, were, they not were not giving, giving attention at, at the point until because we, we raised what, alarms. What they said is that they were providing some relief materials no, here let me and tell there. You, between 2008 to 2020. There was no truck that came from Neymar until we started raising alarms and threatening them that we'll take them to court because we know that Neymar is an institution of the Federation and not of the federal government. And so we as Benway people, we have contribution for Neymar to survive. Then now started the first set of rights they even brought was an expired right that was destroyed uh, before the public space. And now, yes, there is an improvement. And even from the federal government, as we speak, the federal government Buari has given some certain directives that there's a little cushion. In the last three to four days, there have been one or two operations that have calmed down nerves within the areas that people were attacked daily. 
So that we need to commend. That, that's some good news. So yes, how uh, do we as ensure a people Bindu, that Buhari leaves a lasting legacy so that, that is we don't our have prayer, That is our prayer and we are ready to give him the full support, give him all the interest he needs because we know the ancestral home these people are occupying. They are there and we know. The security forces also know. It's only for the commander-in-chief to be able to give directive that he doesn't want these people there. And the kind of operation that took place in Benue in the last few days, if it is on and on, I think within a very short time, our people will be able to go back. And the governor, I'm aware, is ready to cooperate with the federal government for these people to go back. Because the money that is their government is spending to run the IDP camps is huge. It would have been diverted to development. Mm. But now it is being pushed to manage people in IDP camps, yet they are not even comfortable. Okay. Because the rains beat them, we are moving to the Hamatan season, they are going to face the hazard. As we try to round off this conversation very mm. quickly, the Fulani and Tiv used to live peacefully in the past. How do we ensure that this, there's a harmonious relationship between these two ethnic groups going forward? What exactly can be done by the traditional institutions of these two ethnic groups the to Fulani resolve this issue? The Fulani that used to stay with us, we still have a harmonious relationship with them. There are so many of them in Otom's government. We have about 30-something Fulanis in Otum government. And so we are still living with them. The people we are fighting are the people the president himself said they are Fulanis that are coming from outside. Now, it becomes a thing of pain where even people that are highly exposed, that our whole public office comes to tell us that they are global citizens. Mm. It, and, and it becomes Especially so, with that comment by Bala Mohamed, yeah, governor of uh, Bauchi State. Yes, and they, yeah, uh, Nisa Yuguda. Mm. They come out to say they are global citizens. So you are global citizens, somebody should come from anywhere and kill Nigerians, and then you begin to align so, with them. So because, how, what was the we, solution? We are living with Fulanis harmoniously, and the Fulanis that have come from all over to take over our ancestral homes, should be resisted, the federal government should be on top of the situation and make sure that the citizens of this country, because this is not affecting only Benue, it's in Plateau, it's in Nasarawa, it's in Southern Kaduna, it's in Zamfara, it's uh, everywhere. Uh, okay, and just so, before I let you go, are uh, you one of those who are asking that Atiku uh, Abubakar should be stripped of uh, that Zege Mule Utiv chieftaincy title by the uh, Totiv? The issue of giving and stripping of chieftaincy title lies uh, with the Trip Traditional Council. I have advised the Trip Traditional Council to look at the activities of Atiku Abubakar in recent time regarding the people, the Trip people, and if it is worth stripping of the title, please, they should do so. It is their responsibility, it is not mine. I can only draw their attention to his activities, and I have done that. Well, uh, he still remains the, uh, the Zege Mule Utiv for now. And of course, and uh, uh, they should try so you, that are, you are supposed to back uh, somebody like be. that who is holding that position the in the 2023 the elections and all of that. Unless we to seek refuge. Mm. It shouldn't be the shade, unless which when we go to seek refuge, the sun and the rains beat us. Okay, we must thank you so much. Uh, Terence Kwanom is the president of the Benue Youth Forum. We must thank you for reacting to these issues.